trust me you need coffee for this particular topic now we have instances when you have let's say five babies or let's say two or three but then they are from different fathers there is what is happening on the ground and we can actually see but then we have what is happening behind the scenes that we cannot actually see but sometimes can come to affect uh, the health of the baby the health of the mother carrying the babies now what are we talking about here now there is something we call chimerism and micro chimerism now in this particular video you're going to talk about micro chimerism because we've touched a little bit about chimerism in as much as i think we might want to revisit that topic extensively but for today's topic let's see how many of them we can be able to answer in this particular video like for example where do the sperms go the sperms will have dna it's haploid but where does it go is it absorbs into your system as a woman also we have instances where like for example you all of a sudden you're pregnant all of a sudden you developed high blood pressure and then you have protein in urine this is eclampsia and when you go to your doctor they ask if you have other babies that are coming from different fathers in as much as maybe there was a miscarriage or maybe there was termination of pregnancy from a father who is different from the father of the baby that you are currently carrying also in those five babies that are coming from the different fathers maybe they are two maybe they are three apart from uh, the common ground that they share the same mother do we have anything they have in common because sometimes they can share cells within themselves which is interesting because sometimes they can contribute to autoimmune conditions some other things we're going to see later on i know this is going to be quite interesting and on your way to go and grab a cup of coffee counter check if you have subscribed to the channel and by the way thank you very much we are at 100k subscribers and uh, i'm going to do something about that very soon i'll make a video to introduce myself and so other things you'll see that in that video so make sure you're subscribed and also like it like the video and you can tell me in the comment region what experience you've had about micro chimerism or chimerism because this one is going to i know blow your mind i know you have your coffee let's continue now the first thing you have to understand is let's get to know the difference between chimerism and micro chimerism and we do this by just defining what they are now chimerism this is a greek mythology whereby uh, it's a myth so this, there's a creature with a different head that are coming from different organisms, like there's a head of a lion and uh, there is a head of a snake. Yeah, you have an idea now. Now, coming to science, it's not going to be the heads. Now, this is going to be genetic information because we've had instances where you are a whole human being that we can see but you have two genetic information that is distinct and from completely different individuals. And you might ask how this might happen. Now we have instances that are speculated to, to cause this condition, like for example, vanishing twin syndrome, whereby yeah, you got pregnant, but then one of the twin was swallowed. I'll put that in quotes. And then it disappeared. By the time you're going to get your second imaging, you only find one. But then you have evidence that there was something there because of the remnants. I think we covered this topic. If not, you can tell me in the comment region if you want me to make a detailed video about that one. Now, this means that the genetic material disappeared either to the baby, that is adjacent, that the neighbor, the friend there, or into the mother. And uh, when it goes to the baby, it can be that uh, it just went somewhere and settled. Now, in another way, we might find that along the process of forming the identical twins which is where you find that one egg was fertilized by only one sperm but then later on split into two and started uh, developing into two identical babies now during that time when it's uh, splitting there was no complete splitting of the egg meaning that the genetic material either was absorbed and remained in one of that baby or i'm sure you've seen people with two heads like uh, it's one baby so one person but then there are two now imagine a scenario where now that process happened but now it's internal you cannot be able to see it but it's inside there i will give you an example like the ovaries or the reproductive system came up from the other twin and it's inside this person meaning that the eggs will come from the baby that disappeared meaning that it will be fertilized i'm sure you've heard about this case whereby a mother gave birth to a baby and they're 100 sure that this baby was theirs but then when they conduct a DNA test on them, it's not. But then the father is matching with the baby, meaning that he's a father. So to some extent, you might think that uh, the baby was switched in the hospital, but then the DNA of the father is matching. So it turns out that it was a case of chimerism, whereby the reproductive system came from a different baby, meaning that the genetic material was contributed by the baby or that the twin that disappeared. I know, it's quite interesting. But then... 
this is a topic for another day. Let's tackle this microchimerism. Now we have instances where you find that you have foreign cells inside your body that are not originally yours. So they came from another foreign person, came to your system, your immune system never cleared that and it's existing and we have lineages of those cells that are there living inside you and they've been speculated to cause several issues or benefits we are not sure yet. One of such is uh, breast cancer. There was implication of them in such. Also, during the healing process, when you have a CS, there were some of them were captured inside uh, the scar. Also, to make it even more interesting, preeclampsia or eclampsia, where you find that you all of a sudden you get high blood pressure, you have protein in urine, and it's a very dangerous situation to be in, being contributed to by these microchimeric cells. To add to that, they've been implicated to have a hand in a condition like having autoimmune conditions in the body, like for example, having lupus. Anyway, um, let's get to this microchimeric aerobic deeper. Where do they come from? Why do they get into the body? Now we are going to have all that in this particular video. Now we have several ways cells that are genetically different from you can get into your body and your immune system can tend to ignore them. One of such would be which I saw online was the sperms. You get sperms deposited inside you and then you have genetic material from the sperms, then you absorb that. No, that does not happen because the sperms are usually haploid, meaning that they have only 23 pairs of chromosomes, which cannot survive on themselves unless you have a full set of 46 chromosomes. The cells or the sperms will be taken care of by your immune system to be fought off. So uh, that was the way. Another way is through blood transfusion, whereby, for example, you need blood. I donate this blood to you so long as it's compatible. So your body will not fight it off because it's compatible. So you have cells from me inside your body. Red blood cells ignore them because they don't have DNA. But then when it comes to the white blood cells, they have their own set of DNA inside them. They have nuclei. So it means that you are going to also have my set of DNA inside you. But then you have to remember that these cells usually die over time. So the red blood cells, for example, will take around 90 to 120 days to be cleared out of the system. They will die because of old age and then new ones will be formed to replace them. So it will just be taken out of the system. But then we have organ transplant, like kidney. You need a new kidney. You get this from someone who is closely matching your system, like we have HLA typing. And uh, when this happens, you have a new kidney inside you with a set of cells that are genetically different from you. But it's there surviving. But in this one, when we mention HLA typing, in some instances, you might find that you have foreign cells inside that kidney coming from the chimeric cells, the microchimeric cells, and they can contribute to the ejection of this particular organ. I told you, you need coffee for this. Now let's get to the main way you get these microchimeric cells into your system as a mother. This is through pregnancy. Now, when you get pregnant, you exchange cells between you and the baby through the placenta, meaning that it will be the cells that will move from the baby into the mother. And we'll focus on these ones because they are the ones that are yeah, weird ones. Okay, not weird per se. We also have cells that will come from the mother into the baby. Now, imagine this. Now, this is the first pregnancy. Either it goes through or maybe it's terminated along the way. Maybe it was a miscarriage or something. You still will extend the cells. But the cells will go into the mother and they are going to form lineages that will just persist there. Also, something interesting that might happen is the same cells, you see, this is from the first pregnancy, might persist and then you get the second baby. And the cells, now the similar exchange, so the cells can get into the baby. So the second ball, the same thing will happen. There'll be also exchange of the cells between the pregnancy. This is the second pregnancy. There will still be exchange of the cells. And the same thing go down all the way up to the last bone, whereby you may find the last bone can have several lineages of microchimeric cells coming from uh, all the pregnancies you've had, the previous pregnancies you've had. And this is where you find that in that situation, you may find that the body might react excessively badly if the cells are not coming from the same lineage meaning coming from the same father now we've had cases whereby you find that the cells if they're coming from a different lineage meaning different fathers we've had cases of preeclampsia or eclampsia and this will happen by now you see you have a new pregnancy there is a reaction the immune system reaction in the body in the blood because of presence of foreign chimeric cells that are maybe not liked by those that are already there. I don't know how coffee is taking you, but I'm almost getting goosebumps. You can see now where we are headed. Now, we had cases whereby you find that before, or when you're getting that situation, it's quite dangerous. 
there was a measured increase in number of chimeric cells, microchimeric cells, in the blood of the mother who experienced preeclampsia or eclampsia. Meaning, there is a relationship between these two things. Now, before you go to the bad and the goods of the microchimeric cells in the body that's in the mother and in the baby, how do we get to know? How do I get to test and know that you have those microchimeric cells in you, in your system? Now, in a ideal world, a lady is not supposed to have anything Y in their system. Remember, during that fertilization, a Y meeting an X will make a man, that will make a male. An X and an X chromosome will make a female, meaning that that female will always have X and X chromosomes in their cells. So if we get to detect a Y chromosome cell in them, it means that that's a foreign cell that was introduced into their body. And we've covered various ways that that can happen. And uh, we settled on our pregnancy. And remember, we are able to only detect Y chromosome. It's usually very hard for us to detect uh, an X chromosome, which is foreign from the one that is originally there. I have seen several papers and uh, several scientists claiming that most of those microchimeric cells came from a male-born pregnancy. And this is a bias because the technology which was used in those studies was detecting the Y chromosome, which is easier than detecting a foreign X chromosome against a chromosome which is originally there and it's an X but it's it belongs to the owner. You'll have to do sequencing and you remember a human being is made up the, the cell. The human genome is made up of around 6 billion base pairs which is quite expensive to do. So it's actually very easy for you to detect the Y chromosome using PCR because you just only need to get the primers that will be specific to the region that you want to target in the Y chromosome and you can easily be able to do that or you can label the Y chromosome and you can easily use other methods so it's quite easy but very hard for you to detect a new foreign X chromosome from a chromosome which is originally there. Now the detection was found in the brains, in the liver, in the kidneys, in the scar, the CS scar, which is quite significant when it comes to the good side of the microchimeric cells, which is where we're going to go next. And we start it right now. I don't know, maybe how is your coffee taking you so far? Anyway, the positive sides. Now the first one is the healing process. Now we have several studies that have been able to pick microchimeric cells in a situation where there was a healing process. One of such is the CS scar. This is cesarean section scar. So they're able to pick presence of microchimeric cells there. And this means either they were responding to the injury or they were just on locus. But we're not going to give them the benefit of the doubt. We have instances where there was a lady who had a tumor and they were pregnant and the microchimeric cells were picked where there was a tumor. Meaning either, you know, this is a crime scene, we find them in the tumor. Meaning either they were here to respond and help in the healing process or they were the bad ones, the bad guys, so contributing to the tumor or they were just innocent on locus. Now, this is a crime scene. You go and find someone there. It's usually very hard for you to know whether this is a criminal or just a bystander or just someone who's just curious. Unless in the future we get mechanisms and technology that can be able to tell us exactly what's going on here, we are still kind of in the dark. Another positive thing, which is a theory, is now this baby is leaving instructions inside the mother to tell the mother that now you have a baby and you might want to allocate resources, like for example, during the lactation for the survival of that baby. So we have speculations when we find the microchimeric cells in the brains that were there to remind the mother that you have a baby. And Kind of like this is the reason why they have a certain kind of unusual bond between the baby and the mother. Maybe there is instructions that are left in the brains due to the presence of those microchimeric cells in the brains. Speculations. Now let's go to the negative side. Now remember we mentioned eclampsia and preeclampsia conditions where we find that you show up to a hospital with um, high blood pressure and also protein in urine. And your doctor might ask you if you have pregnancies from uh, different fathers. So. We have studies that were able to pick an increase in uh, microchimeric cells in such a situation where you have high blood pressure when you're pregnant. We don't have concrete evidence yet, but in the future we might be able to narrow down to exactly the relationship between microchimeric cells and this condition here because it might be the immune system is responding to foreign cells that are being introduced into the system because remember we said there is exchange of the cells between the mother and the baby and the cells coming from the baby getting to the mother and the microchimeric cells that are already there exist might find it odd that they are not coming from the same lineage so they might 
create an immune response that will create this condition here. We also have autoimmune conditions like lupus and also multiple sclerosis. Now let's go to multiple sclerosis because it's quite interesting. Now remember we said the cells can go all the way to the brains. Part of that can be the baby left the instruction for its existence outside the body so that the mother cannot, I don't know, it's interesting to know. Told you you need a strong cup of coffee for this one. Now those cells remained there because even from the studies that I went through, they were able to detect those cells inside the brains. And it means that they are still there. Now imagine now in the second pregnancy, you introduce new cells coming from a different lineage and then they go to the brain and they find similar things there. So the body might not be happy about that. So because they are attaching themselves to the brains, so you find that there is an immune response which is fighting the brain tissues. So you end up with a multiple sclerosis. Graft versus host reactions. Now, you might be in a situation where you need a new kidney or maybe blood or just a tissue from another person. And then you get that, it's inserted into your body, but then it's coming with microchimeric cells or you have your own microchimeric cells that will come and there is a fight. We have studies that have been able to isolate that in such kind of a scenario. So it's quite interesting to learn about that. And also it's quite also interesting for us to dig deeper into this rabbit hole for us to understand if the microchimeric cells are the good guys or the bad guys. If they are the good guys, we can be able to use them to locate where you have a tumor or help in the healing process in anyone in the body. Or we can get to know exactly why eclampsia is happening and the relationship between the rise in the microchimeric cells and the episode of eclampsia. So until then, I think it's good to stick to one partner to stop complicating so many things. Get, let's say, 20 babies from the same person. It's more beneficial than getting 20 babies from different fathers. It's quite interesting to dig deep into this rabbit hole, which I'm willing to go and dig deeper and deeper and deeper. And uh, yeah, we're going to learn about this. Let me know if you want me to make a video about Chimera, because that's also another interesting topic we can cover. See you in the next video. And make sure you subscribe.